So is it true that fish oil or an omega-3 supplement can help people with dry eyes? And if you decide to take them, do omega-3 supplements have any side effects you should worry about? Based on data from the National Health and Wellness Survey, 6.8% of the US population, or 16.4 million people, have been diagnosed with dry eye disease. And honestly, it seems like a lot more, at least in my clinic. That's a huge number of people who are wondering if something as simple as a supplement can help with their daily, sometimes hourly struggle with dry eye disease. So in today's video, we will cover just that. What is omega-3? How does it help with dry eye? And what side effects can you expect from fish oil? Welcome back to Eye School with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Give a little love tap on the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. So symptoms of dry eye can be bothersome and may include a stinging, itchy, or burning sensation in your eye. You can have sensitivity to light, blurred vision, mucus in or around your eye, and even excessive tearing of your eyes, which everybody confuses as not being dry eye, but it is. Dry eye disease tends to be chronic and it usually cannot be cured completely, but there are treatments now that can ease the symptoms, including over-the-counter artificial teardrops, prescription medications, and and interventional in-office procedures that your eye care provider can do for you. All right, so we said dry eyes chronic and it happens when your eyes don't produce enough tears or the tears that they produce are of poor quality. A lack of good quality tears can cause your eyes to feel dry, irritated, itchy, and even watery. Yes, even watery. That is dry eye. And the reasons for dry eye are, there's so many. There's aging, environmental conditions, medications, hormonal changes, skin diseases, rosacea, there's all all kinds of things and I've made tons of videos about those. And dry eye can actually be a sign of an underlying health problem as well. I happen to be an optometrist. I'm an interventional dry eye specialist, meaning I get into the dry eye issue with you. So we do a lot of in-office testing. I do laboratory testing. We talk at length about your history with dry eye. And I do a number of different treatments, many of them interventional, which means treatments I do for you in the office, whether that's squeezing out your glands or doing IPL, because dry eye is a very individual disease. I always say it's like putting a puzzle together and everybody has a different puzzle, figuring out the things contributing to dry eye and also the things that can help it. So when you're looking for a dry eye specialist, it's really, really important to have somebody that you trust to put that puzzle together for you and find the answers because the answer is almost it's different with almost everybody we also know dry eye it can be worsened by having comorbidities especially autoimmune diseases diabetes it can also be caused by makeup and skincare choices so it's really wide-ranging it can be very complicated in terms of getting it diagnosed and finding the right treatment process and if you're on this video you're a patient who is proactively trying to figure out all right what part of my routine am I missing you might be using artificial tears and you know that to maintain eye comfort and good vision the front surface of your eye must be covered with an even layer of tears that contain the right mix of water and oils it's not all about just having a watery layer to your tears you need the right layers and the right quantities to have an adequate tear film that keeps you from having symptoms and inflammation and all of that so does omega-3 help with dry eyes I know that was a while to get there but research does suggest that taking an omega-3 supplement can reduce the symptoms of dry eyes. The problem is there are many, many, many different omega-3 supplements out there. You can get them at the store, uh, you know, an economy pack, two huge bottles for almost nothing. And that's the type of omega-3s that most patients will take. However, I don't feel that those are the best fish oils for dry eye disease. Fish oil contains two omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA. I'm not even gonna try their long names. And those two things are the most important component of your fish oil, you're looking for the DHA, you're looking for the EPA, and you're also looking for the quality of the fish oil supplement because we know that fish oils become really, really, really common, really easy to get, really popular, and just about everybody you know, has maybe tried it at some point, but a lot of people stop it because it can give you fishy burps, it can give you the aftertaste, it's just not the most fun to take sometimes. So there've been a number of research studies, some showing that it does help. You know, I've anecdotally clinically used omega-3 for years and years with my patients 
patients. It appears that the mechanism of that omega-3s is that they improve the oil film that's produced by the meibomian glands. Now that's considering that you have meibomian glands that are functioning. I don't know if your meibomian glands are completely clogged up and not actively producing oil that's making it to your ocular surface. You know, is taking a fish oil helpful at that point or do you need that interventional treatment to clear the obstructed oil whilst taking omega-3 and now producing better oil that's actually making it to the ocular surface. So it may be a bit of a moot point if we're not doing some gland clearing as well. But some studies do show that it helps the meibomian glands make better oil, which improves dry eye symptoms because it helps, you know, take that tear film back to how it's supposed to look with an oily layer, a watery layer, but not all studies agree. There was a dream study that showed that maybe omega-3 supplementation was not that helpful. Now, there were some issues with the dream study, not enough patients, not the right type of omega-3, not as pure as it could have been, and so not all doctors necessarily agreed with each other, and I think you can probably find different opinion statements on the DREAM study. But we do know that the typical Western diet tends to have a much higher amount of omega-6s compared to omega-3s, and some postulate that that imbalance in omega-3 to omega-6 ratio can be a contributing factor in the inflammatory response that plays a key role in chronic dry eye, because really chronic dry eye is chronic low-grade inflammation of the eyes. So it is a common sense approach to try and increase our intake of omega-3 while trying to reduce the intake of omega-6. And that, in theory, would restore the proper balance for optimal health. The omega-3 fatty acids EPA and DHA have the most potent health benefits and they're the most important in controlling the inflammation related to dry eyes. So if you're here to find out what you need in your fish oil pills, we want a high EPA to DHA ratio to be most beneficial for dry eye. There was a study by Brigham and Young's Women's Hospital that found that participants involved in their trial who consumed the most omega fatty acids had a 17% lower risk of suffering from dry eyes compared to those that had consumed little to none. Also, a diet rich in DHA can help to preserve vision and relieve dry eye, but we know that it's very difficult to get the right amount of omega-3 consumed through foods because of the volume of food needed to achieve the optimal concentration in our body. So omega-3 supplements can be beneficial in providing that necessary amount to relieve symptoms and slow the progression of of eye conditions like dry eye. Omega-3s are healthy fats. They're primarily found in certain fish, nuts, and seeds. They're known to have significant anti-inflammatory effects in the body. Omega-6 fatty acids are found in eggs, fried foods, processed foods, and most vegetable oils. The reality is we need both omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids for good health. And that said, an excess of omega-6 fatty acids in our diet can be pro-inflammatory, so that's why it's important to have the proper amount and, and probably less than we have, right? Omega-3s affect the function of cell receptors in the cell membranes of the body, which help regulate clotting, blood clotting, inflammation, and they also bind to receptors to regulate genetic function, which can help to play protective roles in certain conditions like lupus, eczema, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer. So omega-3 fatty acids are polyunsaturated fats, and there's three primary omega-3s most commonly found in Western diets. There's EPA, DHA, and alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA. EPA and DHA are the most commonly found in fish, and ALA is most commonly found in vegetable oil, nuts, flaxseed, and leafy vegetables. If you're going to take omega-3 supplements, many of the research studies included 180 milligrams of EPA, 120 of DHA taken twice a day. However, the ones in my clinic, I like to see patients reach at least a thousand milligrams combined of EPA and DHA in a day. And that's part of the issue with some of the studies ha that have been done, whether it was AREDS, the age-related eye disease study looking at macular degeneration. Again, the quality of omega in that study was not quite what we're using in our dry eye clinic. Same with the DREAM study. There were some questions about the type of omega that was used. There are a few side effects at the low dosage level, but high doses of the supplement have been associated with some harmful side effects. So there can be increased bleeding risk. I would be incredibly cautious. In fact, don't take omega-3s. If you have a bleeding disorder or if you're on other blood thinners, that's for me something I always check with my patients if they're on a different blood thinner. 
don't wanna just start omega-3 on our own. Or if there's high cholesterol levels, especially if you have high LDL, the, the bad cholesterol, blood sugar control problems, or if you're having a lot of trouble with the fishy aftertaste or odor. There's some at-risk populations too, so people who've had a heart transplant, we don't wanna necessarily just throw omega-3 fatty acids at them because it can affect heart rate. If you have heart disease, only take omega-3 fatty acids under the direction of your healthcare provider. I like to see a thousand milligrams of EPA DHA combined, and I like to see omega-3s that are highly purified. There are many, 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 many types of omega-3 on the market, and many of them are not highly purified. There are certain brands in the eye care space, and I'll link some of them below. And then this video is actually also partially sponsored by the folks at I Love, who have their own omega-3 that I believe is very pure as well. So you're really looking for somebody in the eye care space. If you have dry eye, you're looking for the dry eye effects. We really like to see highly purified triglyceride form fish oil because your body is better able to use it. We tend, tend to see less side effects. We know that there's lower levels of mercury and that can be a health concern for some patients who take omega-3s. So the reputable brands, the ones that are sourcing their fish well and they're purifying their supplement, those are the ones that I really recommend taking. In general, I tell my patients not to just go to the store and get the cheapest omega-3 that they can find. I like to see them in a highly pure version. So that's the long and the short of it. If you're going to take omega-3, I think it's a, a fine idea as long as you don't have other risk factors, any other problems. But for omega-3 from our diet to have a beneficial effect for dry eye, it's pretty difficult to do. So to get a thousand milligrams of EPA and DHA, you would have to consume five servings of salmon or 27 servings of tuna or 35 servings of haddock per week. So you gotta have salmon every single day for lunch. And there's that level of mercury and other toxins accumulating in the body from that much fish. And that would be quite high and maybe not the best choice. You could also try green leafy vegetables, seaweed, some nuts and seeds like flaxseed that have omega-3, more of the ALA version. But ALA has a low conversion to EPA and DHA and it's got minimal benefit for dry eye syndrome. So again, having to really consume a lot of it. So when you're sourcing a supplement to boost that intake of omega-3, if you're playing with this dietary aspect of managing your dry eye disease, looking for really that high quality supplement and maybe looking at your diet as well to complement your diet and your supplementation. And then just also watching very carefully your symptoms of dry eye, letting your provider know, and certainly avoiding any supplementation if you have thin blood or you're on a blood thinner, have bleeding issues, and things like that. So omega-3 in the triglyceride form is the preferred choice for dry eye. Not all omega-3 fish oil supplements are created equal. Manufacturing a high quality omega-3 starts with fish caught from the ocean, starting out in its triglyceride form, extracting the oil from the fish, having that unpurified native oil that still contains the toxins. Then the toxins need to be removed with heat and alcohol. That results in the alcohol or the ethyl ester based synthetic form, which is not absorbed that well in the body. And so many, many, many of the commercially available omega-3 products are sold in the unpurified ethyl ester form. And what separates those high quality omega-3 supplements is that last step, which involves the removal of the alcohol, which is a process called re-esterification, which brings it back to the triglyceride or natural form of the omega-3, but with a higher concentration of EPA and DHA. That process is time consuming and costly. That's why there's such a massive cost difference between cheap omegas that are ethyl ester based and you're highly purified that have the ethyl ester removed. But that is most easily absorbed by the body. It's safe, it's free from toxins, and there is a cost difference. So if you're shopping for a supplement, make sure to read the label, find out the type of omega-3. Is it EPA, DHA? Does it have a high EPA to DHA ratio of four to one? That's optimal for dry eye. How much total omega-3 is in there? Does it come in a liquid form? Because liquid forms are typically triglyceride form. And then also check the expiration dates, smell the capsules to make sure it hasn't gone bad. Expired or rancid fish oil is less potent. It can even be harmful 
simple and just really kind of gross to take. So, and then if you have questions about omega-3s in your eye health, please contact your optometrist or eye care provider and make sure to always schedule annual eye exams to pinpoint early signs of disease before they progress. If you decide to take an omega-3, talk to your healthcare provider first because they'll make sure with your medical history that it's appropriate for you and determine the right dose for your situation. If you've made it this far, I hope I didn't ramble too much today. I feel like I did. But if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you're not put off by all this rambling, go ahead and hit the button and the bell so that you don't miss any notifications. That is going to be it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed.